When you hear the word spy, chances are the first thing you picture is James Bond sipping a martini or Ethan Hunt hanging from an airplane. But one type of spy you rarely hear about is the corporate spy, a person who will do just about anything to protect a company's secret and scope out the competition. That's The Root for the Low Road, a charming new point-and-click adventure game for the Switch with action, thrills, twists, and a whole lot of 1970s fashion. It's probably going to be the funniest game about industrial espionage you'll play this year. Let me introduce you to Numi Kovacs, an ambitious young woman who was recently hired as an assistant at Penderbrook Motors. Not content to simply make copies and answer the phone, she devises a sneaky plan to get ahead. When her plan works a little too well, she inadvertently gets caught up in a conspiracy that is a whole lot bigger and crazier than she could have ever imagined. Isn't that always the case? This is a fairly simple and straightforward point-and-click adventure game where you move Numi around with the left analog stick and pointed objects with the right. It's the kind of game where you have to pick up items and occasionally use them on various things sitting around the environment, such as using a competitor's flyer on the photocopier in order to sabotage your co-workers. A lot of the puzzles revolve around talking to others and convincing them to help you out. They normally won't, so the trick is to run errands and perform some sort of task in order to get your way. This leads to a lot of puzzles that are on the easier side, but that doesn't take away from how clever and devious Numi can be. Seeing her not only get the upper hand, but often run circles around her colleagues is one of the most satisfying things about this game, especially considering how much time they spend dismissing her. Now, on top of picking up items and tricking the colorful cast of supporting characters, you'll also run into a few interactive puzzles. One they go to a lot is a minigame that involves you gently trying to pickpocket somebody by slowly and methodically rearranging keys, knives, and pills without being caught. There's also an interesting minigame where you get to use an old school tracker, as well as a dial you'll need to figure out in order to raise the artificial prison sun. It's complicated. And that's true of a lot of the weird and often goofy situations Numi finds herself in. It's one of those stories where it all makes sense in the moment, but sounds like a fever dream when you're trying to describe it to somebody else. I like the crazy cast of characters and all the secrets you uncover while investigating Rev Inc. There are a bunch of different locations to explore and a voice cast that really sells the inherent silliness of the adventure. Well, except for a couple of the characters who sound like they're reading the script for the first time. Thankfully, the weakest links don't get a lot of screen time. Speaking of weak links, I do wish the story was a bit more ambitious. For as much as I liked the twists and turns, the whole thing is over quickly and it feels like it's lacking the punch it needs at the very end. I also hate how some of the minigames control. These puzzles are easy on paper, but the game isn't always good about letting you pick up and interact with items. This was especially true when you were trying to track a suspect. Considering how simple the premise is, moving the dials around shouldn't be this cumbersome. The good news is that the style and characters go a long way to make up for some of the shortcomings. This is a game steeped in 1970s culture and stereotypes, and every inch of this game oozes with personality. And it's like that from the second you turn on the game and hear the music. Every chapter is introduced with an original song that sounds like it could have come straight out of a Wes Anderson movie. And it's not just the surface level, because the game has a lot of heart. The characters don't just play up cliches, but will buck expectations in some fun and clever ways. I loved hanging out in this era, and hope X-Gen Studios makes more of these games. They warn you early on that industrial espionage is mostly about sitting at a desk and doing paperwork, but that's definitely not the case in The Low Road. This is an utterly charming adventure game with a goofy story, great voice acting, and enough twists and turns to keep you glued to the screen. It's maybe not the deepest point and clicker you're ever going to play, and some of the puzzles are difficult to control, but it has style for days, and I loved hanging out in the 1970s. I certainly hope this isn't the last we see of Numi Kovacs. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. Who is your favorite video game spy? Look, this is not an easy question. From Joanna Dark, to Kate Archer, to Duke Togo, there have been almost too many great spies to name. 
I think my pick is pretty obvious. I have to go with Albatross from Rolling Thunder 1 and 2. I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on next week's episode of Game Over, the early years, as well as the return of Electronic Game Monthly's best and worst of 1998. That's coming sooner than you might think, so I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.